Welcome back to the Wizards. Actually, I've never been here before. We're in Georgia, guys. We're going to talk about some cars you should not buy in these times of high gas prices. Let's get started. So we're actually not far from Brunswick, Georgia, on our way to Savannah. And most of you don't know, probably, that my whole heritage is in the South. I'm from Alabama, from Birmingham. And it's kind of interesting to be back down here again. I haven't been here in a long time. We're doing some beach bumming, getting some beach time in. We're also checking out some really sweet stuff in Savannah. But as we're traveling, we're going along, and I'm seeing gas prices go by, and it just keeps getting higher everywhere we go, another 10 cents higher, and then another 10 cents higher. And I started thinking about six cars that you would think in these times of high gas prices that maybe you could buy one of these and save on some gas, and you would be horribly wrong, and it would be a very poor choice. So the theme of today's video is cars that seem like they probably should be good on gas. And they absolutely are not. So without further ado, number one would be 2004 to 2012 Mazda RX-8. Now I know it's easy to say, say, come on car wizard, that's a, that's a race, that's a fast car. Of course it's not going to get good gas mileage. But the thing is, is this has a 1.3 liter engine. A very tiny engine as far as displacement goes. It's a smaller car. It's kind of... Two, it's a two-cylinder, but it would be considered in the four-cylinder range based on its size and power. And you would think, that's cool, I could get a sporty car, and I could do pretty good on gas. But they don't. They are known, actually known for not being good on gas. So it would be easy to think, I could get 25 or more miles per gallon with one of these on the highway, right? Nope. 16 in the city, 23 on the highway. Average of about 20, 21. When gas is as expensive as it is right now, 21 miles per gallon is piss poor. It is very bad. You could get a Miata. That's the alternative here. It is a smaller car, but it's probably faster, especially through the turns. And it will get 30 or more miles per gallon on the highway. It'll be more sportier, more fun, handle better, and it won't have all the trouble of the rotary engines. So many people I've gotten phone calls from say, well, you work on a rotary engine, and we do work on here or there, light, minor work. We won't tear them apart, but people say, I've called 10 different shops, and when I mention the word rotary, the answer is nope, and they hang up. So uh, you don't want that trouble either, but they are not good on gas, guys. So on to the next one. The next one is a car that people think, oh, I'd like to save on gas, but I'd also like to have a Mercedes-Benz. But I want you to know right now, good miles per gallon and Mercedes-Benz do not go together. From the smallest model to the most expensive largest models, they are not known for good gas mileage. And the one I'm definitely not going to recommend is 04 to 05 Mercedes C230 Compressor. And the reason why is that is the one when people think, I need to get a smaller Mercedes because I want a Mercedes. So I'll get the smaller C230. It'll have decent power, the compressor and everything, but it'll get good gas mileage, right? Wrong. These have the 1.8 liter four cylinder that's supercharged. Obviously, that's why they call it a compressor. 17 in the city, 23 on the highway. And we all know if you buy that car, you're not going to be keeping it in economical ranges of RPM. You're going to be trying to race it everywhere, which means probably 15 average all the time. On a big trip, 20, 22 possibly, especially if you're trying to go 80 on the highway. You could quickly watch your gas gauge keep draining down. and keep, It's like... After your three months of ownership on a car like that, you would be like, I'm very disappointed. I bought this car because I thought it would be good on gas, and it is far from good on gas. It's the opposite. It's, it's a guzzler. It's also what Tyler Hoover of Hoover's Garage calls the cheap class, C-class, cheap class. Everything inside is bottom of the barrel, absolute cheapest that Mercedes will put into the car. 
So you definitely don't want one of those either. If you want a luxury brand, but you want good gas mileage, get a smaller Lexus. Get an ES300 or an ES330 or ES350 or something like that. It'll be very classy, very nice. It'll probably have a V6, but it'll get better mileage than the four-cylinder Mercedes. So look for a Lexus if you want a name brand, a luxury brand, that gets better fuel economy. So now we're going to hop into small pickup trucks. You've got a big, huge gas guzzling truck, and you're thinking, I still need to haul small loads here or there, or pull a small trailer. I think I'll jump into one of those little Ford Rangers. They should be really good on gas. The 99 to 2012 Ford Ranger is absolutely the truck you should not buy with the 2.3 liter four-cylinder. It's easy to think, well, it's got a four-cylinder. It's got to get good gas mileage. And you're wrong. It doesn't have to. And it doesn't. 18 in the city, 23 on the highway. And I know from experience, my dad had one of these, and he never got above 21, ever, all the time. It didn't matter if it was highway, city, just cruising, taking it easy. It was always 21 miles per gallon. Stick shift, automatic, it doesn't matter. There's really not that huge of a difference. And even my dad mentioned, he said, I purchased this little truck because I thought that I could haul things with it, but have good gas mileage, too. And here's the reality, guys. A modern half-ton Chevy Silverado with a 4.8 or a 5.3 V8 will get about the same gas mileage. Now, probably a couple, three miles per gallon less. But the thought of jumping to a small Ranger to drastically improve gas mileage is a farce. It's a lie. It will not happen. You can get almost as good gas mileage with a full-size V8 pickup truck. That, and that's alarming. It even shocks me. It's like, then why are we buying the Ranger then? That, you have to ask yourself that. Why are you buying the Ranger then? It's obviously not going to be for fuel economy. Now, there is an alternative. Chevy got it right with the S10, and the 2.2 liter four-cylinder was basically the same size, and I had one of these in the military. They do get 28 to 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Why can't the Ranger... I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. If you're looking for a small truck to haul small loads with and get good gas mileage, you can get a Chevy S10 four-cylinder, like 98, 99, all the way up to 2004 or 5 with a four-cylinder. They do get pretty good gas mileage. But there again, these are the cars that you would think should get good gas mileage, and they do not. So stay away from the Ford Ranger for fuel economy. And the next one is you're in the market for an SUV, something that gets good gas mileage, right? You think, oh, well, I'll get a Jeep, a Jeep Wrangler. They got the little V6 in them. They'll do pretty good, right? Wrong. We're talking about the 2007 to 2011 Jeep Wrangler with the minivan 3.8 V6 in it. And yes, we've had one of these. And it sucked on gas. It didn't even have enough power to keep speed on the highway. Barely. When on a windy day in Kansas, luckily we're not in Kansas right now, but in Kansas when it's really windy and you're going into the headwind, a 3.8 V6 in a Jeep Wrangler cannot maintain 70 on the highway. So we'd be cruising along trying to enjoy a highway drive and it's over and over and over just to maintain speed. And if you have a black top, the hard top on, it will basically turn the entire interior into a easy bake oven and your children will cook alive in the back. We know that from experience. The AC on high, recirculate, maximum AC, and our children are still sweating profusely in the back. And all the while you're watching your gas gauge sink. 15 in the city, 19 on the highway. We didn't even break 20. 19 on the highway. So the idea of, I want an SUV and good gas mileage. Hey, I'll get a Jeep Wrangler. No, you won't. No, that's a bad idea for gas mileage. So if you're looking for an alternative to that, you could get a RAV4 or a CRV. No, they're, they're not iconic. They don't have the cool Jeep look to them, but they can go most places that a Jeep could, not everywhere. 
and get 25 or more miles per gallon on the highway. They actually do pretty decent, possibly even close to 30 if you take it easy. But that will never happen in a Jeep Wrangler. Now the next one is one of those, again, you think it's got to get good gas mileage. And that is 1998 to 2011 Volkswagen New Beetle. And that's with any of the gas engines. I'm not talking about the diesels, the TDIs. The 2 liter, the 2.5, the 1.8 turbo. None of these break 30 miles per gallon. 20 in the city, 29 on the highway. Now that's decent. But the idea, I'll get a Beetle, it should get 30 some miles per gallon. They don't. Not even close, guys. I was actually surprised a couple of Beetles I've had in the past that they didn't do that good on gas at all. 25 usually is the average, 26. You can buy a full-size Camry or something, a Honda Accord with a V6 and get better miles per gallon than that with an engine that's double the size. So there, there you go right there, the idea. They'll get great mileage, a Volkswagen with a four-cylinder and really a Jetta or anything else, a Golf. They do not get good gas mileage. The alternative is you could get a Honda Fit, you can get a Civic, you can get a Toyota Yaris or a Corolla. Maybe they're not as cool as a VW, but these things really get good gas mileage. We're talking 35, 36, 38, even knocking on 40 miles per gallon. Why can't the VWs do that? Why not? They don't. So take my word on that. Any of those are not the go-to for miles per gallon. And the next one is also a play on words. When we hear the word hybrid, we think, oh, okay, so that means really good gas mileage. Not always. Many of us are aware of the 2008, the 2013, Tahoe, Yukon, Escalade, hybrid. It's a joke, guys. And you don't know how many times I've gotten a phone call saying, I'm looking at Yukons and I actually came across a hybrid. So that'll be really good on gas, won't it? No. Another reason they're bad is because they're always broken. They're always broken. Always. These have the 6 liter V8 that is accompanied by a transmission that has electric motors in it that's supposed to accompany and for acceleration from a stop use electric power instead of gas to save on gas. But the amount of money you spent on buying it and the amount of money you'll fix when it breaks because it will break. I promise it will break. And it's going to be five to ten grand to fix it. All four one or two more miles per gallon. What a total waste. 20 in the city, 22 on the highway. A standard pickup truck or Yukon can almost approach those numbers on the highway without a hybrid, without the thing breaking and costing 10 grand to fix it. So don't fall for that trap where hybrid equals Better gas mileage, way better gas mileage. It doesn't always, especially with those. So the alternative is just buy one of these cars that you like without the hybrid. They're actually very reliable and they are decent on gas compared to the hybrid. They're not that much worse. And you're not gonna get a Yukon or an Escalade with good gas mileage. So if you have to have one of those, go ahead and buy a normal gas one. Skip the hybrid. Do not buy the hybrids. So right now, if you're stuck like we all are in this high gas prices, and I know you guys in Europe are paying double what we are here in America, and we don't have any room to cry about it. And really we don't, based on that fact. But in this market of high gas prices, if you have a gas guzzler, you think, well, I gotta sell this thing, but don't. See if you can purchase a small, cheap, economical car to just get you through these hard times. Hopefully they'll go away. They may not. We don't know yet, but if you're suburban or excursion or whatever it is, it's sucking the gas down really hard. Used to be worth 10 or 15 grand. Right now it's worth about five. Nobody's gonna want your expensive gas guzzler right now. They're not gonna pay top dollar for it. They're gonna pay bottom 
dollar for it. Absolute bottom dollar for it. If you guys remember the last gas hike we went through several years ago, what happened? There were people all over Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace with their pickup trucks. They're like, I paid 20 grand for this thing. If I could just get 10 right now, I'd be happy. Please come buy this thing from me. Don't do that, guys. Don't rip yourself off like that. If you can hold on to it, do. If these prices do come back down and the value of your vehicle goes back up, then you can sell it. On the contrary, if you're saying, well, it's time to buy a Prius. I think I, the Priuses are ugly and I think they're stupid, but right now it makes sense to buy an older Prius. You're going to pay double what the value was. You could pick them up for three grand, a good one, four grand. Now they're going to be 10. Also be careful you're in these high gas prices times, if you're looking at an EV like a Nissan Leaf or any of those cars, say, wow, it's really cheap and I can save on gas because I won't have to buy gas. Make sure to check the battery health. If you get one that's down 60% on its battery, it's life. Not talking about the charge level, but it's life. They usually have a separate bar that shows the battery life meter. What used to be an 80, 90 mile range vehicle is now only 30 or 20. So be careful with that. The idea, I'll get a leaf and put batteries in it. I, I made that mistake. That was dumb. Don't do that, guys. Don't do it. I'm excited to be in Georgia. I love the South. I'm from the South. And this, all these beautiful Spanish moss, everything back here, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Very happy to be here on vacation. So hopefully this video will help you guys out and you're making a decision to buy a fuel economy type car. These ones I just listed are off the grid. Don't do it. Don't buy those. Bad decisions. If you're curious what kind of tools that we use in the shop that's that direction, way, 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 way far away, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below and we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on the videos. Thanks for watching.